Welcome back to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1997 American monster horror film called The Relic. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Around a fire in Brazil, some tribesmen are chanting and dancing while a scientist, Dr. John Whitney, takes pictures. He takes a drink which seemingly makes him paranoid. At the harbor the next day, John arrives in a van demanding that his crates be taken off the ship. The controller says that it is impossible now, so John stows away onto the ship and looks for his crates. He finds some of his crates, but they don't contain what he is looking for. As the ship leaves, it appears that some of his crates did not get loaded onto the ship. Six weeks later, the ship is being examined by the police in Chicago. It was found drifting in Lake Michigan. Lieutenant DeGosta boards the ship and meets Sergeant Hollingsworth. There is blood everywhere, but no bodies have been found. DeGosta is a very superstitious man. They smell something and discover some decomposing bodies in a crate. One week later, Dr. Margaret Green arrives for work at the museum. She is an anthropologist. She is soon informed by Dr. Ann Cuthbert that the Blaisdell Corporation has delayed their decision on her grant because another scientist named Greg Lee has applied for the same one. In two days' time, there is a gala presentation and Dr. Cuthbert agrees to introduce Margaret to Mr. and Miss Blaisdell. In the lab, Margaret confronts Greg about the grant, but he says that she shouldn't take it so personally. Margaret passes Dr. Whitney's office and notices that the crates that were left behind have been delivered to the museum. She looks inside with Dr. Cuthbert and the curator, Dr. Albert Frock, who is in a wheelchair. Margot appears angry that Dr. Whitney is still able to secure funding to investigate superstitions. One of the crates is empty apart from the leaves that they suspect were used as packing. The empty crates and leaves are sent to the incinerator, but Margot saves some for analysis. After closing time, a security guard smokes in the toilet, but hears someone come in. He calls out and is dragged under the stalls by a monstrous arm. Meanwhile, Margaret finishes her work for the night and hears a noise as she signs out. She chooses not to investigate. The following day, the Augusta and Hollingsworth arrive at the museum to investigate the murder of the security guard. As Margaret was the last one to leave, she is taken to see the Augusta. They are on their way to see the security guard's body. The Augusta stops Hollingsworth from stepping over the body as it's bad luck. Margaret enters the room and screams. The Augusta meets with Dr. Cuthbert, plus the head of security. She wants to know when the museum can reopen, stressing the importance that the gala presentation be allowed to go ahead tomorrow night. The Augusta says that it can only reopen once he's sure that there isn't a killer hiding in the museum. The labs are reopened and the Augusta goes to see Margaret while she is working. One of the other scientists tells her that some beetles escaped from their tank last night. She spots a penny on the floor lying face down. The Augusta tells her that it's bad luck to pick it up. He then asks if she saw anything last night or if she knows why Dr. Whitney's office was vandalized. She says no and as they investigate, she tells him that Dr. Whitney is in Brazil studying relics. She says that some crates arrived from Brazil the day before. One was empty and the other contained a damaged relic. When they go to look at the relic, the restorationist explains that it is Chimera, something that superstitious people see as a god or an enemy. The Augusta is called away to the city morgue where he is informed that this is the seventh decapitation in one week. The doctor explains that the security guard's hypothalamus, the part that regulates hormones into the bloodstream, is missing. The Augusta calls Hollingsworth to check and see if any of the bodies that they found on the ship had also been decapitated. Margaret is analyzing one of the leaves. As the results come through, a beetle crawls onto the leaf. She picks up the leaf, puts it into a container, and stores it in the refrigerator. She is about to leave the museum, but decides to explore an exhibition first. She wanders around and is startled by strange noises. She runs out into the bathroom and locks herself in a stall. Someone follows her into the bathroom, but as she peers out, there is just a lady washing her hands. The red carpet is being laid out for the gala. The Augusta arrives and meets Dr. Cuthbert and tells her that she may have to cancel. He soon receives a call from Hollingsworth, who confirms that the hypothalamus was also missing from the bodies on the ship. Margaret is practicing her grant proposal speech for the gala. The Augusta approaches and asks more about Whitney's work. She takes him to see Dr. Frock. The Augusta asks what Dr. Whitney is doing in Brazil, but he hasn't heard from him for some time. Dr. Frock then goes on to explain that he is studying the Callisto effect. The idea that evolution is a gradual process, 
but occasionally there is a leap leading to new short-lived species. The Augusta asks if any of the rituals that Whitney is studying could have anything to do with ripping off the human hypothalamus. Some policemen are searching in the basement beneath the museum. Suddenly, something lurches towards them and they shoot it. However, it turns out to be a homeless man. This man had the security guard's wallet and his blood on him and was carrying an axe. The police think that they have caught the culprit, but De Augusta has doubts, especially once he finds a necklace belonging to one of the victims on the ship under his bed. Despite his reservations, the mayor overrides him and tells him to let the gala go ahead. However, De Augusta maintains that they only open part of the museum for the gala and maintain a police presence. Margaret hears a noise from the container, and when she opens it, she finds that the beetle has mutated and grown huge. She squashes it with a book and examines the creature. The analysis shows that it's part beetle mixed with something she doesn't recognize. She asks Greg if he can identify it. He says that it is a Turkish gecko. As the guests start to arrive for the gala, De Augusta has his men check the building with sniffer dogs. Margaret asks Dr. Frock to examine the results from the analysis. She explains that the beetle has obtained reptilian DNA through eating the leaf. They suspect that maybe the leaves were the shipment, but why then did Whitney send them? As the analysis completes, they realize that the result indicates that the hormone in the leaf is similar to that produced by the human hypothalamus. Maybe the creature that killed the security guard needed that chemical. The mayor arrives and the gala begins. Dr. Cuthbert wonders where Margaret is. She talks to the Blaisdells and introduces them to people. The dogs get a scent and escape from the police. The head of security is advised by Greg that he just left the lab and there is no one there, so they close it down, locking Margot and Dr. Frock away. Instead, they leave through the fire escape and make their way down the stairs. De Augusta and his team are in the tunnels beneath the museum. He learns that these tunnels go through the city and probably lead to the harbor. The sniffer dogs escape and start to chase something, but one of the dogs is killed and thrown back up the tunnel. One policeman follows the creature. De Augusta sends Hollingsworth back to evacuate the museum and then goes back after the other policeman. This policeman finds the dog but is attacked by the creature. De Augusta follows and discovers many bodies. He finds a dog and they go back. Upstairs, Dr. Cuthbert is conducting a tour. Hollingsworth suddenly arrives and tells them to evacuate. Some blood drips from the ceiling and then the policeman's body drops down on top of Mrs. Bladesdale, making her fall into the glass casing from an exhibit. As the security cages come down and people start to panic and run, the museum starts to go into lockdown and all of the power goes off. Emergency lightning comes on and sprinklers activate. People are panicking to get out and are crushed in the stampede. Many are still trapped inside. On his way back, De Augusta radios the mayor and tells him to do what Hollingsworth says. He instructs them to go down the tunnels and come up across the street. Mrs. Blaisdell is injured so she and her husband remain with the security chief, Greg, and another policeman. Everyone else leaves to escape through the tunnels. The dog growls as a door slowly opens. Margot and Frock are on the other side. Suddenly, the creature grabs the dog. They lock the door and it hammers on the other side. Margot explains that Whitney sent a leaf specimen that carried a parasitic hormone. Maybe the creature started out as something different and changed into that. She takes a sample of its blood that leaks under the door. She wants to take it back to the lab. De Augusta offers to carry Dr. Frock, but he elects to stay behind as he'll only slow them down. While Margaret works, she notices that De Augusta is playing with something. It's his lucky bullet. Some years ago, he was shot at point-blank range, but the bullet just didn't pop. Afterwards, the bullet was examined, and it was perfect. There is no reason that it didn't go off, other than pure luck. So, he should be dead. When the analysis is complete, Margaret states that there is no exact match, but the creature has partial reptilian DNA, and it is still evolving. Eventually, she realizes that the creature actually started out as a human. As the police arrive at the museum and try to cut their way in, the security chief is ranting and is killed by the creature. The policeman runs to help him but is killed on a shard of broken glass. As Greg runs away, the creature follows and kills him as well. Helicopters arrive on the roof and as the soldiers enter through the skylight, the creature attacks them as well. Afterwards, it retreats back through the museum and passes Dr. Frock. Marco thinks that as it is part reptilian, they can slow it down by reducing its body temperature. 
So they take some canisters with them as well, as some of the leaves to attract it. They pass Dr. Frock's dead body on the way. Hollingsworth group are walking through deep water. A policeman is dragged underwater and decapitated. Everyone panics as the same thing happens to more of them. However, it soon leaves and they continue. D'Agosta uses the ventilation fans to blow the smell from the leaves through the tunnels to attract the creature. It appears behind them and Margaret uses the canister to try to freeze it. It doesn't work and they run back to the lab. D'Agosta instructs Margaret to go back inside and lock the door while he goes back for it. Hollingsworth group comes to a door and opens it. They escape up onto the street. Margaret sees the final analysis come back. Its DNA match is Dr. Whitney. The creature crashes through the roof and the Augusta calls her to unlock the door. She runs and it follows. She smashes glass jars on the floor as she goes so that the chemicals spill everywhere. She quickly mixes some chemicals in a jar. The creature comes towards her and she throws the jar causing a fire to erupt all around. She manages to escape into a lift. The creature is on fire but continues its chase. The backdraft from the fire knocks the door off the lab and the creature explodes as Margaret shelters in a water tank. The police have finally managed to enter the museum. The mayor approaches the police captain outside and tells him that the Augusta did a good job. Inside the police find the Augusta and Margaret. He tells her to keep his lucky bullet. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.